I am infinitely so excited about life and about what we can do in this world and about solutions that we can create from systems that absolutely fail us every day as an individual, as a collective, as a country. That's my dedication. That's my legacy. That's where I'm moving from. The nutrition side really now in retrospect has always been at the end of the day, I just want a strong body and I want other people to have a strong body so that they can kick ass in life. They can live their life and not drag around a chemistry set that doesn't work. And now let's go because this is it, man. Like let's, let's give it everything we got and let's give sovereignty back to people and let's highlight people that are phenomenal and doing incredible things. All right, one more time, giving away Map Symmetry. We're still in Map Symmetry launch week, so it's a brand new program. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. Do all those things, and if we like your comment, we'll notify you, and you'll get free access to that program. Now, everyone else, we're still in launch week, although it's ending in the next, I don't know, five or six hours, if you're watching this right when it drops. Here's what happens, okay? It's gonna retail for 177, but right now it's $97 plus with throwing in two eBooks. The first one are the Muscle Building Secrets of Isometrics. The second one is Reverse Dieting 101. So 97 bucks gets you map symmetry plus those two eBooks for free. If you're interested, head over to mapsymmetry.com and then use the code SYM50 for all that free stuff and the discount. All right, here comes the show. Darren, I really want the audience that may not know uh, who you are yet, but that's probably not true. But I mean, for the few that may not, uh, exactly how the the show came to be, because it's such a great story on mm -hmm. how that all unfolded. I know you and Rich are good friends uh, and how that started from the podcast and came to be. And then we'll, we'll take you over to the fire later on, because I know there's some cool stories around that, too. Oh yeah. So, so I was on Rich Roll's podcast. I think it was maybe the second time. Um, and Rich contacted me, you know, after it aired and he said, Hey, you know, I have this mutual friend of Zach Efron's, um, Olympic swimmer and, um, Connor Dwyer. And, uh, he said, Hey, Zach, uh, heard the podcast and, and, wanted to reach out to you something about it was you know touched him so um i said sure you know it, you guys probably been around you know celebrities and whatever ask for certain hacks all the time <laughs> and blah 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 and i kind of didn't think much of it i just kind of like another celebrity wanting a, a fast shortcut somewhere so um but then months later zach kind of cold texted me and uh, kind of just really had a, you know, a very open, vulnerable text and just go, hey, uh, I'd love to meet up. And uh, so we had a we had a, a few hour long lunch and very sweet kid, obviously, in in uh, into health and nutrition and exercise and everything else. And so there was a lot of touch points. And then at the very end of that first conversation. Uh, he said, you know, what, you know, we we're talking about everything about what I'm doing, what he's doing. And, um, and I said, Hey, you know, I, I have this show idea that I'm kind of working on on the side, um, superfood hunting, but I want to do it more because I've seen a lot in the environmental space. I see a lot, what's not working water, power, food, shelter, like the world sideways. And he was like, wow, that sounds like an amazing idea. And we just kind of like, cool, we'll stay in touch. And, um, and then, you know, over the course of the next few weeks, we, we, we um, you know, stayed in touch and, and, and developed some sort of friendship. And then he kind of, he shoots me a message and he says, Hey, you know, I have this kind of deal at Netflix that, but it's this old show that I, the show that we haven't aired, I don't want to do it. It's not that interesting. So I asked my producers, could I bring you in and let's just revamp the show? <laughs> and so that's crazy. That was pulled off. I can't b believe you'd have crazy. Yeah. The, it got switched that, that like, just like that by a phone call from him. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously the, they're protective of him, right? Mm -hmm. So they're like, who is this dude? <laughs> 
Yeah, and uh, but he's like vouching for me. And you know, you're going through their attorneys and business managers and producers, and like I'm having all these you know meetings with all these people. And like the cool thing about what I've been able to do in my life is I'm pretty integrated. I care about what I do. I, I I'm I've kind of put my heart and soul into everything. So I'm not. I don't. At the end of the day, I don't need to do a show. I wasn't looking to do a show to do a show for a show's sake. I just want to do it to kind of move the needle in the world. And so, you know, people eventually saw that I was uh, aligned and integrated. And and so, yeah, man, he uh, we've revamped the show. I put my ideas down, and the the, the cool thing is the show was basically paid for. We had a bunch of good sponsors and integration. So it was no sweat off of anyone, but it was really just a a better show that ultimately Hmm. turned out to be. And what was the original concept, if you don't mind me asking? You know, from again, it was before my time, but it was it was something to the effect of Zach was gonna be in maybe one or two episodes, but it was really other celebrities. Uh, going around in cultural significance, maybe it was related to them and their lineage. And then they would have, you know, like they'd go to Puerto Rico and I don't know, JLo going to Puerto Rico and, and having a meal and blah, uh, something like that. And even though JLo was not involved with it, I'm just using an example, but it was kind of like that. It was a little flat. It was about food and travel and blah, blah, blah. And so they kept a little bit of that theme. With the food and travel, clearly, it was already a part of it. And then we just kind of amped it up and looked at the environment. And I was able to bring Zach out into the Amazon and show him around a bit and uh, and, and expose him to certain things that, you know, was health of people and health of the planet. And and so, yeah, we, we, you know, it wasn't, I almost quit too. Like it was a point where we were filming the first week and we were in Puerto Rico. That was the, it was a little out of order in terms of how it actually then the first episode aired, but, but it was, I tell the story all the time. I was like, again, I'm not compromising myself. Right. And, and I was at a point where I was like, man, this is like, this is intense. You know, you're with a a list celebrity, even though Zach and I had this relationship it's just like a lot of intensity. And then you're like, there's conservatism that's starting to pop in. Like, uh, they don't want to push that far into subjects. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, come on. And so I was, I was getting a little upset and I finally kind of turned the camera on myself in the, in the hotel. And I kind of, kind of authentically just let it rip and then sent it to the producers just, just because I needed to kind of get something off my chest. And it created a, a great kind of open, honest dialogue where we just kind of listen. They were like, listen, here's our point of view. Here's your point of view. Let's figure this out. And it wasn't what I realized. It wasn't a lack of, it, I wasn't compromising integrity. It was just not going as deep down to certain into certain subject matters. And then I was like, okay, if this is just a tip that we can start to kind of get into, mm-hmm. I'll be okay with that. Start so the conversation, right? At least start yeah, the conversation. Healthy Some tension. Infotainment. Yeah. yeah. As you, as you guys know, you know, if you're hitting someone that doesn't know anything about, in your case, health and nutrition, what are you going to do? Like start, blasting them with, you know, take these adaptogens and do this. No, just eat better, drink well, sleep well, and move your body a little bit. <laughs> Let's start there. Right. And, and so, so yeah, man, that healthy tension turned out to be kind of a lightning in the bottle actually, because I learned a lot. I'm like, if I would have gone with my intensity, it would have canceled out, you know, the, I think North of you know, there's 75 million people saw it and it, it would have just spoken, you know, how it's easy to kind of create something that only your little group right. totally understands right. yep. instead of it reached over the aisle 
it educated people. Obviously, it's helpful to have Zach. Um, and we were able to, the astonishing thing is, you know, as you guys know, when you're in your little silo and you're working your ass off for your lifetime, you, you, you lose a little connection of like a regular person mm -hmm. doesn't understand about water. They don't understand what's really going on in the environment, nor do they want to beat the drum of some, you know, the extreme people that are judging them in the process. So uh, anyway, it, 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 it obviously it turned out to be great. And we have, you know, season two is done and that's going to be coming out this summer. So, you know, we're rolling. Awesome. I th I'd say that's one of the hardest jug juggling acts of people in the health space is how do I present great information, but also digestible and not blow people out the water. Otherwise you're just talking to your peers. Totally. And then it's like, okay, it's like, uh, you know, it's just a circle jerk of just <laughs> yeah, yeah. totally the same, the same. Okay. You, you stroke, you stroke your ego because your colleague likes it, but did it move the needle? Probably not at all. No, right. Not right? At all. right. How did, now how big of a role did you play in picking the locations for where you guys went? Well, originally, <clears throat> um, the, the subject matter is, is it was my, my kind of sketch of like everything. And instead of, Sardinia. I was wanting to go to Okinawa for the Blue Zone episode, mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, but it turned out to be filming. It was just radically diff more difficult. So we go. I obviously went to Sardinia, and I had a, a, a relationship with um, uh, Dr. Longo, and he was he's Italian, so he was going to be there anyway. And and so yeah, it just ebbs and flows. And then we didn't even know until two weeks ahead of time we were going to Iceland because we were actually going to Northern California. Some friend of mine, friends of mine, doing some alternative experimenting uh, clean energy tech, and we that was slated in the show. And then all of a sudden they're like, they weren't far enough along. There was nothing to film, so. So we were like switched the corner and we're all of a sudden in two weeks, we're in Iceland. Uh, so, so yeah, it started off with, but then, you know, a, as you guys know, anything with the team uh, just becomes now the contribution of the entire organism. So originally, you know, was, I sketched a bunch of these ideas down and this is what I wanted to do. And, and then it evolved into even something better. What'd you think of uh, Iceland? One of my best friends, he's well-traveled and he always tells me about Iceland, one of the most beautiful and unique places. So what'd you think of it? Man, a uh, different planet, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's so unique, you know, the geothermal activity, obviously you can, you can utilize that they're power dependent, independent, um, just the, the vastness of the land, um, and the small population. I just love that. So you can like, you know, take one turn and you're not seeing another person. Um, I mean, the, the, the biggest downside is I, I wasn't there long enough. I had a day off where I just contacted a, uh, um, herbal company, uh, and I got a hold of the owner and I ended up foraging and running around with, uh, the owner for like half a day just to kind of get my, you know, hands dirty and, and look around a little bit, but that, that place, you, you know, it's, Again, it's just like, it's such a unique area um, and, and it just puts you in awe, you know, and I think we captured a really good part of that in the show because it's just, you know, you, you feel like you transported away and just seeing what they're doing with what they have and you, what they're utilizing is, 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 you know, something that, that is um, a great example if we would all just kind of invest into uh, alternative sources of power and energy and you know it's like there's a sovereignty there too there's a there's a you know uh when you're you when you're kind of like a small community essentially you 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 tend to have an island mentality where you're like hey we got to take care of ourselves here totally. so 
you really get that sense. And then you have this everywhere you go. It's basically a small town vibe, which is very heartwarming. Well, isn't like everybody there almost like connected to like a handful of families, right? That goes back. (laughs) It's that connected. Yeah. That has to be wild, right? Yeah. It's, it's, you know, you look or it's just a, a, a certain look of the person. The weird thing is, when I was there, like I didn't realize so I'm, I, I, you know, both sides of my family are, I'm Norwegian and I grew up in Minnesota and there's a huge population of Norwegians. And so when I was in Iceland, it felt kind of, aside from them speaking, it felt very like it was a similar look. And I was like, God, this is tripping me out. I know I'm in Iceland, but I feel like I'm in Minnesota. So it's like, <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. It's true. it looked like you you enjoyed seeing some of the reactions that uh, Zach would have in some of the different locations and things that you would have him do. Uh, what was the one? Was there a location that that you got to see kind of the best reaction or the best change in either him or yourself or even the people you came with? Mm. Well, you know, I, I have such a love for the for the Amazon, and I was really happy and and stoked to bring Zach into that world. Um, you know, it's not easy, you know, you see it on film, but it's, but you know, you're, you're on the rivers, your boat breaks down, your, um, uh, are we going to get through this area? One of our boats got stuck. Um, and then it's like, Hey, we really want to get to either the Camu Camu, or we want to uh, check out Una de Gato, or we want to check out another herb. And there's no kind of easy way to get there. So there's a couple of those places I could see Zach's, you know, head. And there's this one moment where, uh, I think it was going after Unidigado at one point. I don't even know if it made the show, but we were walking through, you know, up to our knees and, and sometimes waist and water and, uh, Tarek or my buddy, Zach was, we got, we got to walk through all this stuff <laughs> and, uh, you go, yeah, yeah. In order for us to get, but you can, you know, he could sit in the boat. Um, and of course he was game. And, and then at one point, so Tarek just like, just said, matter of fact, he goes, Hey, if don't worry, if the leeches get you, we, we, we can get, we can get them off. And then you could see Zach's face where he thought it was a joke, but then he realized it absolutely wasn't a joke. Um, <laughs> Because you're, you, you know, I've been in these situations. I've brought people that are at desks in the middle of the Amazon for supply chain management, understanding, et cetera. And I've had people where you're not paying attention and you can get hurt really fast. I had a girl um, that was with me who was on a boat on the Amazon River and she was just talking, talking, talking. I didn't realize like a, a, a branch shot out of the water just randomly i ducked she didn't see it wasn't really pin and hit her right in the nose broke her jaw and broke her nose holy oh, shit wow. yeah she had to be had to be taken away i mean she was a trooper um but you know that that kind of stuff you know and i felt a little bad because it's like you know uh, in retrospect i would have re- prepared people and had a little briefing <laughs> and just go listen yeah, it's this wild is, out there yeah it, it's anything can happen and we're far away so yeah. what, and, and so we had a lot of those things in 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 down to earth too but uh, obviously it was a little more controlled and um not so again more conservative than <laughs> we <laughs> originally then maybe i wanted to take him in well it's interesting you're bringing the amazon because this is actually where you found out about your house right is that not when that happened yeah man what? yeah so yeah, yeah walk us through that yeah it's wild so you know my property is on 50 acres here there's a thousand oak trees there was an old uh kind of hunter's lodge it was a really cool house, 1933 house, one of the oldest structures in Malibu. And uh, it's been around. So history tells me it's probably going to be okay. <laughs> but I knew the fire started and I'm listening. Obviously, I'm in, I'm, I'm in, in Peru. And then all of a sudden, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, 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 you know, okay, there's an evacuation. But then I'm like, we're filming. Like, so we jump on the boat. 
uh, we leave this town called Iquitos and we're gone. So no cell reception, uh, a few days go by and, um, we do our thing and I'm just kind of like hoping that, uh, it's all good. Um, and, uh, when I got back, as soon as we kind of pulled into the dock, uh, I turned on my phone and then there was like hundreds of messages and, 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 and a picture from my neighbor. And then the shock, you know, the, the blood drains out of my face and, and that's just the shock. You it's just like, what? And so I called my neighbor right away and, and he was just like, I'm sorry. That's all he said. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, is everything? He's like, I'm sorry. And he just kept saying, I'm sorry. Like, I was like, fuck. And I, you can't process it at that time. So, um, so yeah, I had a suitcase and thank God my dog was, was not there. Uh, and luckily I, cause we were going back and forth from LA to back and this chance we, we went back. So I drove my car to the airport cause we were going to be gone for a couple of weeks. And I just felt like I wanted to drive it and leave it there. Luckily I had a car and that didn't, my truck got just blown up and motorcycles gone and house gone and barns gone and every blade of grass. There wasn't a blade of grass. There wasn't a leaf. There wasn't a bug. There wasn't a bird. Everything as far as you could see was gone. And, uh, and of course I, it really set in when I finally got back. Um, so yeah, it was, it was bloody intense. Uh, that's for sure. <laughs> so it was a hell of a show. Uh, what a way to end the show. Right. Like yeah. I, I sacrificed my, <laughs> for the, for the greater good of a freaking TV show. <laughs> well, really the mission underneath it, uh, is, is really what the show is about. So, um, but again, you know, listen, I can, I can say now with, with a hundred percent, um, truth, I wouldn't take it back. Uh, the things I'm doing now and the, the trajectory that it fueled me with the stress response that I've now adapted to as a result and the, and the opportunity, um, the insight, uh, the, 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 the coming together of people and, and things and power, water, food, technologies, and things like that, that I'm doing on the property. And, uh, that is more than just me. It's for a greater kind of good. It just, you know, if you look at it from the show to losing the house to what I'm doing now, it's all kind of the same organism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You were, you were in the process of, I, I believe doing like a sage meditation thing when this was happening. <laughs> do you, do you believe that was like symbolic for you or there was, there something, a deeper meaning in that whole thing? I mean, talk about how crazy that had to been. Oh man. Like that was, I mean, on, on the conscious level, I didn't know. Right. I didn't know that while I was being, I mean, we didn't do ayahuasca at that time. I, I had done ayahuasca 21 years ago, um, but we were at the ayahuasca center. So, and definitely nothing you want to do on camera <laughs> to <laughs> convince Zach not to do that. Um, but we did these ceremonies anyway, right? Some saging ceremonies, cleansing ceremonies. And it was, it was powerful because this was like, this was the last episode. And this was us finishing this, this three, three and a half month journey. Um, and so I'm in this state where they're, you know, I'm, I'm in like, I'm, I'm kind of in this meditative state. They're cleansing me and it was intense. Like I, but I was like completely chilled, relaxed. And then we looked at the timing of me while I was having that happen. It almost lined up exactly when my house would have been actually burning. That's crazy. Wow. Was and it, so I'm being smoked. As you see in the show, I'm literally being smoked like yeah. from, from the ground all the way up. I'm being smoked while this whole place is in smoke. Were, were there any intentions during the meditation that you think could be connected? Like we like intended like to, you know, leave certain things behind, move forward. Anything weird like that? I wasn't consciously aware of that. Um, I know that the, the filming was so intense. So it was kind of, you know, uh, 
you know, my, my purpose of doing the show was always infinitely bigger than a show. So my, my, my being was dedicated to what we are looking at and, and dedicated to. So, so carrying that kind of weight was good. And I realized my position in that for, as a producer as well, like I'm holding a certain moral compass to the subject matter, to kind of living this way and bringing in Zach and the whole group of people that don't necessarily live this way, but also deeply got touched and cared and learned along the way. So as I was getting smoked out, I realized there was such an intensity that, that I was holding for a long time for the show that it was finally able to kind of release that. Um, so again, on a conscious level, I wasn't aware that my house was burning, but it was perfect. You know, it was absolutely perfect on a soul level. I would imagine that it was absolutely aligned and a letting go and a setting up. If there's no time, if we don't look at time and we look at what we're here to do, perfect. <laughs> absolutely freaking perfect. Like I'm ready to freaking go. I am infinitely so excited about life and about what we can do in this world and about solutions that we can create from systems that absolutely fail us every day as an individual, as a, as a collective, as a country, that that's my dedication. That's my legacy. That's where I'm moving from. The nutrition side really now in retrospect has always been, and in my physiology days and learning about the fascination, as you guys know, the fascination of this incredible freaking body we have, this whole world is like, listen, at the end of the day, I just want a strong body and I want other people to have a strong body so that they can kick ass in life. They can live their life and not drag around a chemistry set that doesn't work, right? Right. So for me, kind of that next step now is like, okay, cool. I continue to take care of the body and help other people do that. And now let's go because this, this, this is it, man. Like let's, let's give it everything we got and let's give sovereignty back to people and let's highlight people that are phenomenal and doing incredible things. So yeah. I mean, that's a little bit of a tangent, but that's, that is part of the gift of the loss. That is absolutely not a loss. Hmm. Right? Is there a defining moment where, you know, this, this sort of sparked all this passion and this drive to educate people and get people aware of uh, a lot of what you bring up on the show, a lot of the uh, sustainability, a lot of the uh, superfoods and and items and things that people are just not quite as aware of as as you are so educated on. I mean, I think you know, as you guys know, I think you know, it's it's like you know, it's breadcrumbs along the way, right? And and, and I'm very aware that you know, it's, it's weird to say but I actually can even feel in this moment, I was born three and a half pounds in 1970 and had a 50, 50 chance of dying and almost died. And my, my father spoke of that time before he passed away and he saw my life. Every time adversity would come, I would go eh, and figure out a way around it. And he started it by seeing me fight for my life. So I'm going to say it started as far back as I'm aware of. And then I just, these things happen. I can't sit and be, I don't know where it comes from, to be honest with you. I don't know where, you know, we all get the crap beat out of us in life. You can't get around that but what are you going to do with it? I just can't sit in a, I'm a victim place for very long. Even though this world 
it's a, in a weird way, promotes it. And, and I just, you know, the, 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 when I lost everything, everything except suitcase, my, one of my cars and my dog, um, sounds like a country song. <laughs> exactly. You just need a beer and a thick of bread. <laughs> totally. totally. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, it just it just is such a f- deep soulful fuel that it seems to strip away for me the the superficial shit i i and, find i find this really Interesting because you are at a place in your life also where I'm assuming with all the attention and fame that you're getting now that your you, your life is being filled with an abundance of things, both uh, maybe spiritually and materialistically, and that you've had this previous experience. Is that reframing and reshaping how you receive this stuff and what you what you spend time thinking about? I mean, are you are you different now because of that? Well, I, I, um, I think that, you know, having gone through life and working really hard and coming from, you know, kind of a blue collar mentality and not having this happen when I was 12 and insecure or 15 or 20, um, you can see how that can mess people up oh, yeah. for sure. You don't know yourself. I started this whole thing. You know, I started superfood hunting because I was like, holy shit. How do people not know about this? And they need to consume it because it's going to help you, period. So it was very simple. Like, okay, cool. Totally naive. You're a farmer in the middle of nowhere. I'm going to try to sell this stuff (laughs) because because at the core, I know I struggled and I want and I know I feel great or that I know how to feel great so that I can again, live a better life. And so that is in my kind of, that, that is the muscle that I have worked for a very long time. So for me, success of the show, great. Next, great. It's on the path. Like, awesome. Attention, cool. Guess what I do? Turn down 99% of the shit that gets thrown at me. Because I'm like, I'm not, I don't care if it's not moving the needle. Now, products that I fucking love, I'm going to support them. Like, like minerals and water, BLK, the Fend product with freaking, you know, like stuff like that. Uh, a company that I have, Baruchas, like we're planting trees. We're supporting 2,000 people, like things like that. Footprint, this company that's creating alternatives to single-use plastic, the biggest in the world, working with Cargill, McDonald's, Pepsi, turning off the faucet of plastics, that shit. Yes. All of these things that are moving and, and I can, from what I, my vantage point, what I think, you know, food forest abundance, working on with these guys, scaling the ability for people to grow food. Like that's the, that's what I am trying to use. And again, putting water, power, food, shelter at the fore- forefront of people having their own sovereignty back, turning off this dependence on things that clearly is not as secure as we once thought they were. Totally. Mm-hmm. 100% on board with you. It's, um, you're talking about being empowered. And you mentioned early, uh, earlier about... Uh, it seems like it's being promoted. The opposite is being promoted to feel more like a victim. Why do you think it's so alluring for people to be a victim rather than empowered? Cause on paper, it doesn't make any sense on paper. It's, I think anybody would look at it and say, well, of course I don't want to feel like a victim. I want to be empowered, but it doesn't seem that way. It seems like it's obviously more alluring to be a victim. Why do you think that is? I, the only guess I could make, uh, cause obviously an individual has their own set of circumstances and 
And we all, I think, listen, have I been a victim in my life? Fuck. Yeah, of course. Like we all have. And then all of a sudden you're like, well, you shake out of it or you're going through challenges and you haven't quite had the insight. So I don't want to minimize the fact that we're all human and we all take punches and we all feel bad about ourselves. I certainly have. My point is that through the resiliency and relenting pursuit that we can overcome, right? So again, that's why I go back to, you know, take care of yourself, move your body, breathe through your nose, uh, sleep well, drink good water, like all of that stuff. Now, the seduction of being a victim is it's hard freaking work turning around and viewing yourself and looking at yourself and taking a hundred percent responsibility to how you act and react in your life. Now that I don't see enough of that. So it's not to say that you get out of jail and you don't have things happen to you at all. You're going to, I'm going to over and over and over and over again. But I have shifted my perspective and saying, it is not happening to me at all, ever. Even though I can't even see it sometimes or understand why it's happening for me. And so my feeble, tiny little brain and my body and my being needs time to process. In that process, with the fundamental understanding that it's happening for me, deep in there, I know that it will exercise itself into an evolution of awareness and understanding that will set me up to be infinitely greater than I was before. And the more I do that, the more when I get hit with challenges and I have that operating system that I've been training and I let come up going, okay, this sucks. I'm pissed off. I'm sad. I can't believe they did that to me. They stole, they lied, they cheated. That's on them. They did that. I have a piece of that. Maybe I wasn't willing to acknowledge that they were lying and I stayed in it and blah, blah, blah. And I set it up, whatever. But knowing that how I react and what I now do with the information is 100% on me. I do not and will never take that idea that someone else's fault. You know, you know, what's interesting about what you're saying is that studies on fulfillment and happiness clearly show that a part of that formula is challenge, that you can't really feel <laughs> happiness unless there's like a, a serious challenge uh, associated with it or connected to it. It's like, you know, we're in fitness and we get, we've gotten this question asked before, like, you know, what do you think, what do you think it'll be like when science finally invents fitness in a pill? Like you take a pill and now you get all the results of fitness. I said, it's not going to be the same. You'll get the physical benefits, but you're going to get, that's only a piece, a small piece of all the benefits because it's the struggle that you get. And I'm assuming you, I mean, all the stuff that you do, um, talk about the journey because there's lots, obviously amazing destinations you've reached and goals you've reached, but what do they mean without that struggle that got you there? Dude, a hundred percent. Like, like, you know, a good workout, you can easily quit, but then when your buddy pushes you and you do a drop set and you want to throw up, like you're like at the end of the day and even the next day you feel the soreness, you're like going, God damn, you sore? Yeah, I'm sore. Like, like you, you actually then appreciate it because you know that you could have quit. And so the same thing, it's like. I don't know all the reasons, but this happened and I lost everything. I got, you know, a guy stole a bunch of money from me in a bad business, whatever the thing is, the extraction of the learning is one of the biggest underutilized 
superpowers there is. Because again, the seduction is not owning it, not turning around and looking at it and not, you know, cause, cause we, we don't want the world to know that we messed up. And so we like, Oh, keep it. And we justify and we're defensive and all of this stuff. It's like, one of the biggest things, hey, man, sorry, I messed up. And, and that takes away all the power, all the defensiveness, and creates the openness. You know, go into an intimate relationship and see that mirror every freaking day. And, and so, you know, again, I think the, the self monitoring and the the willingness to see where you're you're not seeing something the willingness to grow the willingness to look at your stuff and clearly you know when the when people say god this you know this thing happened to me again and again and again or a relationship the same thing happened and you're like uh it's you, dude. Like, you know, we're frequency generators. We're magnetic. Like, there's no secret, man. Like, 70 trillion cells are all little batteries and frequency generators. And, like, and you're putting out vibes and you're not getting it, then you're just going to cycle this crazy shit back around. And for me, it's like, okay. One of the great things people can do is ask questions, right? Okay, what am I not seeing in this scenario that if I were to see it would change this reality and this outcome to garner and gain perspective that I'm clearly not getting? Those types of invoking questions create an openness of you and this amazing universe and your consciousness to open back up. And one of the greatest things is who the hell am I? Because I guarantee you, we all think we know who we are and then life smacks us around like, Oh shit. Is that who I am? So I love to go back into the questions and just kind of drop to my knees go, whoa, I am not understanding something right now and I'm getting the crap beat out of me. So please make it clear to me what the hell is going on so that I may understand it and correct it. So I have a very, I try to work on the intimate language inside myself every day and try to listen to myself, because there's no person closer to you than you. And I think people don't listen and they don't listen and they listen to other people uh, too much. And they don't listen through that lens of their intuition, their instinct. And, and that I think is something that is, is such a powerful thing that will guide you in your life. And the moment you blow that off, you know, when something blows up in your face going, you know, I knew it and I blew it off. What was the, what has been the last big self-awareness aha moment you've had? <laughs> um, well, uh, I guess I can say this publicly. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't hold back. Don't you hold back on me right now. Um, <laughs> well, I think, I think the sur surrender right me for me right now is, is such a, maybe you guys can relate. I've always been someone that charges. I get clear, I get focused and then I fucking go for it. And sometimes I grab on <laughs> And then I want to get there. So my company, this Baruchas company, and I have to send you guys some of these nuts, by the way. Um, we've been struggling internally 
a lot. I'm not going to get into it and partners and everything else. And I love this company because I love what it's doing. It's planting trees in an area of the world that's being destroyed faster than any landmass in the world. We're helping support lives of people forging and getting these nuts. And we're providing one of the most nutrient dense nuts in the world. This is not an ad, by the way. I'm just saying it means a lot to me having gone through the superfood world for the last 20 years. I had to get to a point where I couldn't work with some of my partners and they were taking advantage of things. And all of a sudden you're like, the very thing I founded, I had to, which I did, I let go of, I quit. No one knows that. No one's ever I've never said anything publicly about this at all. I quit. I let go. I said, I'm done. Take my name, my likeness off of the product because I can't work like this. I don't know what you guys are going to do and I don't trust you. And I was gutted. I was at a grocery store and I saw the product. This was like a day or two later. I started crying in the grocery store because I also know for me, every superfood is connected to the people I've met, the areas that I met, the the, the ethos, the culture. I know what it's doing to them. I know what it's doing to the body. I know for me, that's, I can never really speak that. You can market that a little bit, but you don't don't really do. It's in my body. It's like, I've been there. So when I'm looking at that package going, I may not ever be able to eat these again. And those people don't have a job. And then about a week later, I get a call from a friend of mine who's a father-in-law of one of my best friends. He says, I just sold a bakery business for a God awful amount of money, but I, I made money, but I want to do something great. And I've known you now for a decade and I know what you're doing and I want to hook on to that. And I told him, I said, well, I just let go of this thing. We can start something new or I didn't, wasn't expecting anything or, I mean, certain amount of money, I'm not going to say publicly, but certain amount of money, we can try to buy all these guys out because I think they would do that. And he goes, let's do it. Oh shit. Wow. So so we're in the process of that right now, dude. Oh, wow. wow. Good, That's exciting. Good deal. So, so it looks good. Mm. I mean, again, anything can happen. So, so the biggest thing for me was surrender. It was like, I tried for nine months to do this. And that before I got to the point where I had to let go mm. and I completely let go. And so I always struggle with that. I have a vision. I feel I know what it is, and then I grab onto it. And sometimes I miss letting go and trusting the process. And so I constantly go back, power versus force kind of thing, right? Mm. Oh, that's a, that's a tough lesson. It's a real <laughs> tough lesson. <laughs> yeah. so is, speaking yeah. of superfoods, um, what is one of the best common superfood someone can find at the grocery store and what would make it a superfood and then i'd like you to talk about yeah and can you define it too i think you know in terms of the 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 term superfoods like what does that that actually mean and and then i'd like you to give us an exotic one maybe one we haven't necessarily heard about or one that maybe isn't so uh so common um and talk about those benefits yeah i mean well superfoods are i mean i over the years i even define it differently because now the watered down understanding of a superfood. So, so on the one hand, I would say every, every following nature, planting, growing soil, growing food in that scenario, following nature is a superfood. Let's just say that it's not exotic superfood, but let's say the super in all food come from the soil. The microbial biodiversity of the soil. We all know factory farming, monocropping destroys that. 
top soils, all of that stuff. You, you don't, if you don't have soil that's diverse and it's microbial and mineral rich and uh, you, you, you have a weak plant, you may see it as the same, but it's, you can't deliver what isn't there. You have photosynthesis for sure, right? But you do have poor adaptation of minerals and compounds and things like that. So superfood starts with soil. And so I love wild food because the earth has sorted it out, right? So wild food is great. I mean, you're pulling something out of the Amazon, una de gato, just cat's claw, incredible immune modulator. Uh, it's a vine. Uh, I've drank the water from the vine of una de gato. When you're taking that, you can feel it. And it's from that already balanced Amazon. Now cut to monocropped romaine lettuce, right? Mostly white, very little compounds. That is not a superfood. Now, but if you grow, if I grow it right here and I build my soil up, that romaine lettuce has infinitely more nutrients, micronutrients, compounds, you name it. So, so I would adjust my superfood in the way how it's grown, the soil that it's from, how it's processed, when are you eating it? Because we know within hours, nutrient deprivation are, are, is already starting. Certainly antioxidants, vitamin C levels, uh, you know, so now we, now we're starting to talk about eat closer to the home, uh, grow your own food if you can. Now that's a whole, we can talk about for days about all that stuff. But I would say that originally when I got into superfood hunting, I was looking for extraordinary. I was looking for compounds uh, and mostly almost, I fell in love with the adaptogenic family, right? So that adaptogenic family, and I'll just kind of stick here because obviously it can go uh, a lot more intense. Uh, but adaptogens are these class of herbs and botanicals that are essentially, they have adapted to their own environment. So therefore the cool thing is they've, they've allowed themselves, their compounds have allowed us to deal with stress and, and that, and the adaptogens really is, it's in a few categories and they really come by way of, so, so before I go down that, give examples, ginseng, fantastic, shizandra, chaga, uh, many of the neurotropics, rhodiola, uh, maca is kind of a secondary adaptogen because it doesn't have all of the qualities of adaptogen. So these kind of things, and plus as you guys know, adapting to stress is super important. And now we're hit with stressors from the indoor air quality to EMFs to our regular stressors, just to metabolism. But adaptogens are, there's about three or four qualities that make them an adaptogen. That is they, they produce nonspecific defense responses to stress. So they're systemic. They're not like a caffeine molecule that is going down one path and you're going to be stimulated. They're nonspecific. So they're modular, right? They're also helping your body normalize influences of stress. So they're working in that they're helping to almost re-regulate and upregulate, downregulate things like the endocrine system, things like the nervous system, things like the immune system, the digestive, and the cardiovascular function. And very importantly, they're non toxic, right? So those classes of superfoods or super herbs are really, and I, I'm kind of hanging out in there with those just because they're so important for people to include in their daily kind of use right now because of the stress, um, chaga mushrooms, like we've all seen the elixirs and, 
you know, Four Sigmatic Mushrooms and all these guys and now have kind of created ways for us to consume these on a, on a regular basis. So um, these are kind of the areas that I, I would focus on and, and, and you can take these long term and they're not again, stimulatory. They're, they're used and you allow your body to modulate over time. Uh, you know, so chaga mushroom is one of my favorite hell. I named my dog after uh, chaga. I first and learned. So, I first learned about chaga years ago. Uh, God, it's it's got to have. It's got to be at least now, maybe twelve years ago. Um, I had a family member uh, battle cancer, and I was and it was just, it was it was terminal, so there was nothing Western medicine can do. And I scoured the internet and read the anti-cancer <laughs> effects of the chaga mushroom, and it was just incredible. Some of the some of the literature. That's out there. What I find most fascinating about adaptogens <clears throat> is because you you explained it really well. It's it's why adaptogens can dampen a autoimmune issues, but also boost an immune system that's too weak. So it can do both, depending on the person that takes it. Exactly. And and the cool thing is, it's as you guys are well aware, this junction that we have the HPV kind of access, right? So we have like the hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal. So no, that right there is kind of regulating our response to stress, right? So, and, and adaptogens work in that area to help, help to regulate that because if that goes haywire or it's being overly stimulated through all kinds of chem chemicals these days, which is a whole nother rabbit hole. I'm working on a book right now and in the invisible killers personal care, clothing, uh, uh, indoor air, indoor fire retardants, uh, EMF. It's like, holy shit. Darren, you know, it's really weird. I just literally last week, I was going through my social media feed and this article pops up about the Amish, about their low <laughs> cancer rates. <laughs> extremely low cancer rates, which makes me wonder how, yeah. how many they had our, it right the whole time. How right? many of our cancers are caused by the just the just the the you know technology and plastics and chemicals that we're surrounded by? Dude, believe me, man, it is it is horrifying. Well, we like we, we all just had Dr. Cabral in here just five days ago did a hair sample test on us weeks before, <laughs> and he read it on air. And he said what was so abnormal is all four of us had high levels of mercury, which is rare to find in you know, four people on the same test like that. And it's the air quality inside this studio. We have poor circulation and we have all this heavy equipment in here. And all of us had high levels of mercury. So, of course, we. Yeah, I'm on I'm on a, a chlorella uh, <laughs> cilantro sauna protocol now to, to detox my body from. Yeah. No know, idea. We had no idea. Yeah. And that's, and again, that's, that's the danger. Like guys are healthy dudes. Right? right. And, and it's like the, the environments, the invisible environments that we're creating that we're sucking in all the time. And that, that you know, think of the flip. We live 97% of our life outdoors, right? We slept indoors. We got the hell outside. Now it's the opposite. Yeah. So, so how are we, the glues, the formaldehydes, the phthalates, the endocrine disruptors, the, the, the paints, the colognes, the perfumes, the, the, the stabilizers, the flow agents, all of this stuff. Plus, like you said, in the, the, even the flow of ventilation has such a massive amount of, not to mention molds and everything else, has such a massive amount of influence on us. Plus, what is in there that's flowing through you on a daily basis? Uh, I've been having incredible talks with Dr. Uh, David Edwards, who created the Fend product, right? The, the, uh, I think Jennifer, by the way, Jennifer Cohen says hi. Oh, uh, good yeah. friend of ours. Friend. Yeah. She's, uh, she's been helping me out in a lot of business stuff. I love her. Um, but Dr. David Edwards, we're talking about air quality, right? And so he's, he's got that Fend product where you suck in just by hydrating the upper uh, larynx and esophagus that is the first organ in our body to dehydrate. So it shuts down our ability to receive oxygen. 
And by hydrating it, just by breathing in salts, opens the air quality up. So there's so much nuance that we have to unpack where we've gotten all these things wrong. So I am absolutely dedicated right now. I don't want to write a book on this, but I know I have to because it is a silent killer that's getting us on so many levels. I've been reading stuff on EMFs that weirdly you can't really Google search unless you know specifically what you're looking for. Call it weird call it a super algorithm i don't know why Scrubbed. but yeah. if you if you if you do emf research they say that's oh, fine right nothing's wrong uh, these levels are fine by the way the fcc regulation on 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 emfs is from the 1960s they haven't updated that so you you think our technology has advanced a little bit since then and the research that i've been looking at with emfs is dating back all the way to the AM and FM radio was affecting mammals and migratory patterns of birds. It killed the red sparrow. Like we knew shit was going on way back then, not to mention more white microwaves, not to mention 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G. It is utterly and infinitely scary. The truth is they don't know and no one has done studies on this. Very few. And the ones that have, they're deep buried away. So there's so much going on. We're a biological being sensing energy all the time, regulating to the human resonance, the Schumann resonance of the earth, regulating to the energy coming from the photons of the sun, regulating with our own per people, we're always conducting frequencies. And then when you, so that's like 50% of the equation are natural biological frequencies that we're always adapting to in our environment. The other 50% is what we created. So we created all these non-biologically assimilated frequencies that are EMFs. And these are having catastrophic uh, effects on us. And we are just experimenting in a direction that is, I even saw, I probably shouldn't even say some of this stuff, but <laughs> because I'm in the book on it, but I even saw, which didn't even see coming, had no idea about melanoma connected to EMFs had nothing to do with the sun. Yeah. Like, I was like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> do you do you, anyway, do you so, think that this is, uh, because if you look at like the span, because I, I go back and forth, like, uh, is, there, is it nefarious or are we just trying to figure things out and we're not as smart as we think we are? It's like, you know, you look at food, for example, the most pressing issue we had to figure out at one point was we need to get more food. And it's like, we ignored everything else. Just get food. Don't worry about it. We got to feed people. They're starving. And now we're obese because we ignored a lot of, you know, a lot of things. Same thing with activity. We got to make life as sedentary possible because look at people are hurting. My back hurts. Your knees hurt. This guy's 50 and he can barely move because of hard labor. And now we're like so sedentary. We're getting sick. Do you think that the, that we're going to start figuring this out now? Because we've already solved those pressing initial issues like starvation. I got to need, I need a house and we need technology but now we're at the end of that and we're like, okay, wait a minute. The, some of the ways that we've done this have caused, some, have created some kind of unintended consequences. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the irony is we haven't solved, especially food. It's we, so there's people starving today and yeah. we have enough food. The reality is we have enough food on the planet to feed everybody, yeah, so everybody transportation, right now, right? Yeah, up to 10 billion people right actually. now today. Yeah. Right. And then we have in cities, we have a food scarcity and food deserts. And, and you could say, a uh, uh, buddy of mine, John Lewis, created a documentary film. We're trying to get distribution for it called They're Trying to Kill Us, right? And they go into the science around why, are there, why in, in certain cities, certain areas, you can't even find a whole food. You can't find it. There's no grocery store. There's 7-Elevens and there's alcohol that you can buy. What the hell is going on? Why are there systems like this? So... I mean, there's, there's so many different rabbit holes to go down to try to answer this. Um, I think, did any of this start off nefarious? Probably not. I think it started off innocently. 
Um, I think monocropping started, you know, listen, the aboriginals were, were creating food for 60,000 years and people just now are waking up to that reality. They're growing food, right? So uh, we thought it was 10,000 years ago. Well, it was five, six times that. So, and we did it without, you know, as we need food, we, we were able to create it. So we, we have divorced nature. So anytime, I'll answer it this way. If you divorce nature in any way, you're going to have unseen consequences and maybe some are planned. I think that um, the largest fatal convenience is profits and power over health. I think that uh, I don't know why. But every personal care item I look at, every device, every regulatory thing, the EPA is not an agency that's protecting us. The FDA is not an agency that's protecting us. The FCC is not an agency that's protecting us. That's the delusion. It's not. Clearly, it is not. Just look. It's obvious. I take my, so, so it's like there is no regulatory body that you get to just sit back, relax in your recliner and say, Hey, is, if I can buy it, it's safe. You have to be that's your own regulatory body. You have to. Exactly. So that's why I'm doing this. And really the genesis of, of writing this book that I'm just like, I had to hire a professional scientists to back everything up. And just like my dad suffered from this disorder, chemical sensitivity in the nineties. He couldn't walk into a room that had someone with deodorant or regular shampoo, or it would send his neurology out and he would get all blank and he couldn't focus. So I learned early on just to hang out with my dad. I couldn't wear normal stuff. And then the more I detoxed from that, the more I realized it was affecting me, but I didn't know that. And so yeah, I, I wish that this wasn't the case. I wish and hope that companies knowingly, I hope they don't put things in knowingly. But what I really hope is that I, I don't know why that we're just putting things out there and saying, well, we don't know. And now I have so many reports saying we don't know if it's safe, but they're still putting it in the public. Yeah, I it's feel like, like I, I, I feel like healthy people make uh, healthy choices, and then that drives the market in a better direction. Unhealthy people make unhealthy choices. I mean, you look at the food industry, and the the number one, you know, most of the research and development goes on just making something as palatable as possible, and using whatever ingredient or chemical they can do, and that's because a lot of consumers, that's all they care about. So it's like, we got to start getting healthy before anything. If we start doing that, I think the, the rest will follow. At least that's, that's my opinion. I, you know, I'd like your opinion on, you know, there's a lot of people or companies that will create a product, you know, here in Silicon Valley, we're up here in Northern California. And there was this product that came out that promised to replace food. It was a powder, Sweet. you drink it. And oh, yeah. the idea was you don't got to get up from your desk, you know, God forbid you get up from your desk and, and you know, stop coding just drink this and it's got everything your body needs. It's perfect nutrition. Um, and, uh, you know, to those of us in the health space, we realize how arrogant that is because we still don't even know all the stuff that's in food. But talk about the difference between eating a real food in its natural state versus eating something that, you know, been scientists engineered. or engineers yeah. have put stuff in there saying this is now, this is what your body needs. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> obviously being, you know, in the supplement industry for a long time, um, it's not about replacing, it's about filling in the gaps. I think, I think there's a space for sure. There has to be and is for the proper use of like what we were just talking about adaptogens. Why the hell we, why do I think we need to, to consume adaptogens? Because we're living unnaturally under a huge amount of stress. And we just started talking about all of the unseen things that people aren't even thinking about that are stressing the hell out of them. But 
you cannot replace nature. Just like you alluded to, the arrogance that we have to, to take this, do that, and you're good, that's ridiculous. Like, that's why it's like the core, even when I wrote my book, Super Life, they were like, hey, what kind of superfoods you want to talk about? I said, I don't. I want to talk about some foundational things that really aren't going to change. You know, move your body, be happy, have a good attitude, uh, eat a bunch of plants, uh, sleep well. Let's talk about water. Like, don't drink toxic water because unfortunately it's not necessarily clean. So it's all of these things. You cannot replace that. You have to start again following your instincts, following nature. And then, and only then, like I'm sure you guys get this all the time. Everyone wants to cut a corner. Oh, yeah. Right? It's like, I, I just, yeah, but it's like, no. Like, I remember back in the day, when was it the early 2000s, maybe, when I was kept hearing all these people doing, you know, uh, HGH for longevity and testosterone. I'm like, and I'm looking at their life going, what are you doing? Right? It's like, if you just do a few of these things, your testosterone is going to go up. Here's some data to show that, right? If you just, there's, there's Chaga. Chaga. <laughs> He's like, yep, that's right. Um, he's like, take me for, a, I need to move. Take me for a run. Um, so it, it's things like that. So I love to kind of go back to, we, we cannot, when you look at an apple that has 300 compounds in it, and we don't even know, we're, we just found out recently that anthocyanins and blueberries were actually a prebiotic yeah. supporting the microbiome. We just it's learned like, that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like. What? Like, so again, like the arrogance, like you even talk about the olfactory system, which we divorced a long time ago, but also were manipulating. Olfactory for food selection is infinitely the best medicinal need selection device for the body, period. As long as you're not manipulating the food and then trying to, if, if it's a raw whole food and you smell it, you know instinctually whether your body wants it or not, right? So it's like all of these things that we've just kind of blew away and blew off, uh, we just got to go back to. Again, we just go keep going back. And that's why I love culture, indigenous people and all that stuff. What did they do? What did they do? What did the Ayurvedic tradition, what did they do for 20,000 years? What did the aboriginals do for 60? Like, what were they doing? It's, it's the long, th these are the longest studies that we know about. I mean, we have double blind placebo controlled studies for 60 days. Like, why don't we look at what people did for 30,000 years? Like, I feel <laughs> yeah. like that, that'll give us better answers. And a study just came out. In fact, I know all the biohackers were promoting the benefits of metformin. It's so great and great for insulin, this <laughs> and that study just came out showing that they connected it to changes in sperm that could increase genetic, uh, issues in offspring that just came out. Uh, I think it was like two, eight, two days ago. It's yeah. like, yeah, we don't know all this stuff. It's, it's not, it's not possible. We don't have enough time, no. but we know how we evolved. Uh, so, you know, that, that makes exactly. to me, that makes the most sense. Absolutely. You brought up water, yes, I wanted, which I really yeah, wanted, I, need to get into that. I wanted to talk about <laughs> your experience at, at Lords at the Springs mm -hmm. there in, in France. It's very strange, right? Like all the <laughs> healing properties can't be explained or can it mm -hmm. like, what did you learn over there? Well, that was one where I, did I want to go quote unquote, no pun intended, deeper into that subject because, I mean, that could be a whole docu-series oh, yeah. on water. Um, I mean, that this is a lot. There's a lot to unpack with water. So, Well, start uh, with it. Start, yeah, because I'm, yeah. I'm actually embarrassed to admit that I actually didn't even know that spring existed. So I didn't, I, I, of the three of us, I didn't, I didn't I mean, know anything yeah. really about it. And so, I mean, start with like just explaining that place first because mm -hmm. I was so fascinated by that whole thing. Well, the quick story is that um, hundreds and hundreds of years, years ago, St. Bernadette uh, received an apparition of an angel and said, go to this, go to this place 
uh, this spring will heal you essentially. So she did. And this spring, which still runs to this day, uh, had reported healing uh, qualities back then. And, uh, and it still goes on. So thousands and millions of people go there every year. And um, so that's a really quick version of the story in Lourdes of how it happened. So now there's actually a medical board and a medical director, which we feature in down to earth that his job is to scientifically prove if he can, from every angle possible to his, his own, what he has available to him, can he explain a spontaneous remission of someone having something heal? If they can explain it, it's not a miracle, right? It's like, oh, well, you, you know, <laughs> you ate blueberries too, or whatever <laughs> right, it, right. it was, but, or you took this drug, right. you know, you took your cancer meth. So <clears throat> hundreds and hundreds of years, hundreds of miracles that they, the scientific board could not explain. So therefore it goes to the parish and they look at like, you're talking about stacks of research. Wasn't this, wasn't this, wasn't this, wasn't this. We can't explain it. They were, they either uh, drank the water or they were doused in the water or they were plunked in the water, whatever it was, they were, had a condition and it healed as a direct result of just the water whoa yeah and <laughs> right so we were looking even on the series this was all real time we didn't look at this ahead of time cool thing about down to earth is we we know where we're going but we zach and i don't talk to the people before unless we know them ahead of time but this was all like cameras following us around this is what's going on they're showing us cancer here's the before Here's the x-ray. Here's what happened. This was one of the last miracles. I'm looking at it going, what? Like you, you're staring at it. You're going, it's changed. It's different. The person now is, doesn't have cancer. So, so that aside, fascinating, whatever, it continues, right? And so you just, you can't get your head around it. So now what's going on with the water? And all you can do is point at a few things. Number one, we can talk for days on water coming out of your tap. Yes, it still has BPAs, it still has uh, pesticides, herbicides, chromium-6, for God's sakes, in Flint, Michigan, like whatever the toxic, and it's also chromium-6 is everywhere, it's carcinogen and everything else, and yeah, is it convenient to turn on the tap and look at the water and think it's clean and drink it? Sure, there's a convenience there for sure, but the truth is there's stuff going on in that. So with that aside, the pollution that still exists in water that we need to filter, there's qualities in water that, that dare I say, are closer to quantum physics than anything else. It's a live, it's an organism that we can at least touch and taste and see that acts closer to quantum mechanics and chemistry and biology than anything else. And there's great work. If you haven't, if you want, Dr. Gerald Pollack is a great guest to have on. Um, he actually came from muscle physiology. That's where his first work, uh, understanding the physiology of how muscles actually contracted. And then he realized there's some stuff going on in the water activity, which got him into understanding the fourth phase of water. The fourth phase of water very quickly is called the exclusion zone. When water comes up, and this is a, a snippet of some miraculousness of water, certainly not the end all be all because we don't know. But what, we, what Dr. Pollack found out in his research that is now backed up by tons of other researchers 
that research water and other things. And that is this exclusion zone. When water comes up against a hydrophilic surface, call it the cell membrane, right? But it comes up against that surface. What happens, the protons and electrons separate. And then in that exclusion zone is a desalinated, I don't know, however, a millimeter less, whatever that is, whatever that is, whatever that space is, there is nothing there. It excludes everything else out. In that process of just coming up against that hydrophilic surface, in that exchange of the protons and electrons, instantly creates energy. So let me say that again. When water alone comes up against a hydrophilic surface, i.e. a cell of that which we have 70 trillion plus or minus, it creates energy. So that that mm-hmm. defies the laws of physics. That's literally energy out of nowhere. Yeah. Yes. Well, this is why I bathe every night. <laughs> just yeah, saying some, just I saying feel so good he's just saying they, he's, these guys make fun of my bubble baths all the fucking time bro but i mean he, he's making yeah. energy <laughs> exactly are you familiar I'm with the bubbles with mine. the research by it was a japanese researcher uh was it Dr. We had a, yeah yeah are you familiar with that and, and of course yeah okay. so so um so dr emoto's work i mean people can read the messages in water he started taking frozen slides of organized structure of water when it was influenced by either frequencies, words on the written bottles, whatever. And he started taking these, these, these pictures, right? The, the organizing, listen, to, 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 to bring this back down to earth a little bit, if you take a tin sheet and put uh, electrodes on it, and hit frequencies, and you put sand on it, you can go Google this right now, or you've done it in your eighth grade biology class, and you hit a frequency, 428 hertz, it organizes the sand within seconds. And you see the geometry, the organizing principle of the universe is staring you in the face. Okay? Three, six, nine, the organizing principle of the universe is in frequencies, in numbers, in mathematics. Mathematics is what he was showing. So whatever the words, whatever the frequencies, whatever are examples of frequencies, going all the way back to that's what we are, which is why EMFs fuck us up. The organizing principle of our base biology is frequencies, magnet, ma- uh, magnetism, you name it. And you're seeing it, again, going back to the celestial uh, quantum mechanical water, you're seeing it represented in what Dr. Moda was doing. And come to find out later... I ran into Dr. Lee Lorenzen, who's still living today, who, who is still a researcher, who still we were talking about and looking at the ability for, the, he's looking at the certain structures of water and how it's structuring and what it can do to nutraceuticals. It's so funny, I brought up uh, Una de Gatto what I was telling you in the Amazon, he was doing specific work with Unidigato using structured, organized water, and he could deliver the information from the Unidigato using very little, if not any, of the physical matter, but had it organized in the water to be able to be delivered in the body, and then the body actually receiving physiological response as a result. Wow. Did I wow. did that just blow your mind or what? Wow. <laughs> Processing. So 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 listen, Dr. Lee Lorenzen, I have 
I met him in 2018 at the Bulgarian Water Conference where I, where I met Dr. Pollock and where I met um, uh, uh, Luke Mont- Dr. Luke Montier, who discovered the HIV molecule or, or, or discovered the HIV virus. He's 80-something years old, and all of his research went into water because they realized that this entity, we know nothing about it. And yet, I sat there for four days with the most scientifically advanced people I've ever met in my life, bar none. I could barely receive 2% of the information. Barely. And I walk away every time these guys are delivering their research to their colleagues. So it's really advanced. Every conclusion is they're seeing how water goes up a tree. They're seeing how water goes up in the body because the, the heart doesn't have enough energy to pump blood because it doesn't add up physically. They're seeing all this stuff. They're seeing how water is contributing to it. They're acknowledging the exclusion zone energy pump that's being created. But they still, at the end of the day of all of their science, they still don't know how it's doing it. No clue. No idea. (laughs) But that they're seeing that it is doing it. Yeah. I I mean, just to to further (laughs) bolster kind of what you're saying, I mean, every major spiritual or religious practice, uh, water is a very, very important part, uh, of the practice. Um, so, you know, we've identified for a long time that water's special, not just cause we need it to live or, or it's needed for life, but, um, above and beyond that. So totally. Yeah. So, you know, getting, getting on that front, like blue water, blue bottle, it's got love on the outside. Even if this isn't even if they can't scientifically prove it, which I've met, met too many people that can. So that aside, <laughs> even, if, even if they can't prove it, why, why wouldn't you? Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, and then, you know, you add like freaking BLK drops and you add the, the, cause it's, there's, there's energy, but then there's also elements, electrolytes that are the building block of conductive activity of cells in the body and biology and chemistry. Right. So when you take all of that plus the energetic influences, there's so much we can do and there's so much that influence. So imagine buying a water bottle, uh, a a bottle from, you know, in the airport. The hell are you getting? What kind of information are you getting from that crap? Right. Not to mention the endocrine disruptors, the phthalates the BPAs, the plastics, all of that shit that we've already talked about. So can you imagine if you look at this, if I'm an alien, I'm coming down going, what the hell are you guys doing? <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Totally. You That's- guys, you guys have a magical celestial being entity as water. You're shitting on it. You're consuming crappy energy all day long. You're surrounding your food and water with chemicals. You're polluting your air with chemicals. You're polluting your environment with electromagnetic fields. The hell are you doing? Is it your plan? Because the only conclusion that alien can make, is it your plan to destroy yourself? Just, just a question. Yeah. Not- Along the lines of, uh, of water, <laughs> you're commu- okay, let's, you, let's pretend you're communicating this to you know, a family member or a friend of yours that has nowhere near the passion that you have towards these things, but can make some very simple, yeah. you know, practical decisions with their water choice when they're yeah. at, in situations like the airport or just going to the grocery store and looking at the 400 fucking bottles that say all kinds of random shit. H- how do you communicate <laughs> that to them? I would say don't buy water bottles <laughs> at all. If you're in the airport, uh, buy like, uh, you know, Fiji or uh, a spring water if you can. And then I bring this bottle with me. I dump it immediately out of it. Even though I know I'm going to drink it in five minutes. For me, it's like a placebo, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, what you can do really easy. 
again, we have a lot of chemicals and contaminants and information coming out of the tap. Now, is that a great convenience? Because there's a billion people in the world that are, that are not, don't have water on demand. Sure. Right. So let's celebrate that. But now you need to do another step. What is that step? Reverse osmosis, strip it, get all the junk out because you're getting a lot of junk you don't need. Reverse osmosis or distillation. So that lowers the total dissolved solids, the TDS. You don't want those types of TDS. You want high amounts of minerals, electrolytes. So you need to strip it and then build it back up again. So reverse osmosis, distillation, you can get one of those devices for one, 200 bucks. You don't have to buy another bottle of water again, essentially, right? And then add your electrolytes into it. You don't want to drink distillation or reverse osmosis on its own. No. Stupid. It's vacant. doesn't have the electrolytes. Your body's going to dump more electrolytes in order to stabilize that which you just took in. So please don't cut off the message here because everyone says, well, you just said drink distillation or no, I didn't. No, right. <laughs> so RO distillation add again, not to plug, but this is what I add fulvic minerals, ancient plant minerals. I add drops of that in my water or a pinch of Himalayan crystal salt, get the electrolytes in a glass of water, or half a teaspoon per gallon, get the electrolytes back into it. And if you can, Put it in glass bottles. Um, you know, again, the rabbit hole is you could you could vortate, you could structure, you could get the energy back in, you could get the uh, exclusion zone. You know, you can literally take a glass bottle and put it out in the sun and let the let the photons uh, activate the water again. Easy, right? Super easy. Or you can add um, lemon. You can add. You keep cucumber in. So that's actually going to diffuse electrolytes in it and also help structure the water. So there's so many different things. And literally, it costs you 200 bucks, and you don't have to worry about changing those filters for a year. Mm. Love that. I like yeah, to add protein great. powder to mine. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. No, this, is a, this has been a great conversation, Darren. Re really, really interesting to talk to. Real fun to talk to. Yeah, you. we got to come back yeah, with your book. When man. your book is, uh, when you're Oof. getting ready to launch the book, we'll yeah, have you back, come back on. Come back on the but show. Your, your passion is genuine and authentic, and it's um, uh, it's it's appreciated. It's contagious. Well, uh, thank you guys. I, I've been stoked. Jennifer speaks so so highly of you guys, and I, I just really appreciate the because it's like the 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 care that you guys have. It invokes. It allows me to to step into that. So. It's it's a shared connection. I appreciate oh, that. Much and appreciate. I'm, and I'm De grateful. Definite alignment. Next time sure. we're down there, uh, we'll we'll try and try and link up. I, I I go down there probably maybe a couple times a year, and I'll say hi to Jen and try and hook up with you a little. Oh bit. yeah, yeah. We got to do some thumping. We'll get you out here in the in the great fifty. I've got some good stones we can throw around. I got a squat <laughs> rack outside. Oh okay, nice. Uh, good deal. Yeah, yeah. Have you been uh, introduced to or linked up a good friend of ours, Paul Check? Are you are you familiar with Paul? I've met Paul a couple of times. Okay. Uh, we haven't uh, ha had a proper sit down yet, but so many of my friends said, you know, I should talk to him for sure. And Laird, I worked out with Laird for okay. 15 years, mm -hmm. Laird Hamilton. And like, you know, actually back in Colorado in my Boulder days outside of school, I was using Paul check methods, um, exploding, doing medicine ball outside stuff, uh, you know, so I, I love Paul. He's yeah, a, he's a legend. Yeah. You talked about structured water. We, we went to visit him and he had this like, yeah. this like pyramid of crystals and stone. And there was a bottle of like a glass. <laughs> Sitting out, sit out the sun. Yeah. yeah. And he was explaining this is way, this was years ago. So I must have at least five years ago. Yeah. I'm like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Paul, you know, listen again, you guys probably know him better than me, but he seems to have this, these, th these parts of himself that are very integrated because he has this, this deep, deep understanding of the spirit and of these other things, but also this very grounded scientific uh, knowledge. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's all, it's all, yeah. it's all good information. So excellent. Yeah. Thank you again so much for coming on the show, Darren. I appreciate yeah, yeah. it. Great yeah, time, great. man. Thank you. Appreciate it guys. Appreciate it.